switch. Um, okay, so if you had a limit switch on this side, like we do, okay, and then you had a limit switch also on the back, and then another stopper or another trigger like this on the other side, uh, if you did that there and you did that on the x-axis, uh, and obviously the z-axis, you really can't do it very well, but uh, that's hard limits when it actually doesn't matter what the software. So if you lost, the benefit of that is if you lost steps, uh, it would still stop the machine from smashing your Z. Uh, if you lost steps going down and it thought it was further down than it really is, you'll still come up and smash your Z, even with the soft limits. Um, the, uh, that's the benefit to it. The, uh, the non-benefit uh, is the fact that it's always looking for the signals. That means you can introduce noise and it will stop your carves when there's nothing wrong. That's why I like soft limits and homing is the fact that the homing is uh, one, your spindle is off so there's a lot less noise in your system, um, less likely to have noise issues. Um, but two, if you do have noise issues, you're going to have a hard time ever having the hard limits activated. All right. Now we have, uh, let's see, the homing uh, direction invert mask. That has to do with what direction the, uh, uh, the, they travel to look for the signal. Okay. So here I have 23 set at 3. A lot of times what you'll see is 23 and 3 set at the same direction. Okay, um, that is usually with their, your belt drive systems. Okay, but if you look at I have a linear rail Z, which is a direct drive to the Z. It's not flipped over and on a pulley, so it's actually facing the other direction. So instead of clockwise, it has to go to counterclockwise. So that's where I had to change. Um, I believe it's the direction, the number three. I had to change that to get it to go the correct way. Uh, one or the other I had to change. Um, to, I think it was, yeah, it was the direction. Because uh, the homing still, I want it, this tells you, do you want to home down? Or do you want to home up? Well, for the X and Y, it's kind of like up, I guess you could say, okay? Uh, or according to the, uh, the mask, okay? But the other one, you want it to or actually it was homing, that's right, it's down. So it, it, the X and Y, uh, it's kind of like what's coming down and over this way. So that's like negative, you could call it, okay? And this one, it's going positive. And that's why if you come over here to my mask, you'll see instead of three ones, it's zero, one, one. All right. Okay, moving on, uh, homing feed, uh, that has to do with your speed. And your seek seek is when it's going really fast looking for the initial trigger and the homing feed is the secondary after it bounces off okay which uh i'm not sure if that has anything to do with the homing debounce or not uh i think that's the amount of time it actually looks for a signal or when it when it tricked or looks for a false trigger i'm not exactly sure uh there's other smarter people that know what that is Homing pull off is the distance that it after it feels the trigger, how far it'll tell by the steps to go back. Uh, 100, 101, 102, uh, those are your steps per millimeter. Uh, so if it's if you jog if you're jogging and it's not going as far or going too far, this is the, these are the numbers that you're going to change. Uh, my Z is going to look different than yours uh, because of my linear rail. Uh, here's the max uh, travel rates, max speeds that uh, your your uh, axis can go. As you see, my X and Y are 8,000, which is stock. Um, but my Z, because I have this linear rail, and I'm more comfortable with everything, and I got my soft limits on. I'm pretty comfortable jogging this thing, and I got five and three quarter inches of travel. I bumped this baby up to 1800, uh, which is about 70 inches per minute, uh, max travel speed. It's set to only 20 from stock, okay, 20 inches per minute. 
Uh, I have this thing up to 70 now, and it, it's awesome. It jogs pretty cool, pretty fast. Uh, this is acceleration. Uh, basically, that's kind of self-explanatory. you got to know about acceleration to know what that is. This down here is your max travel from home. Okay, this is how your this is how you control your uh, soft limits. Okay, uh, goes hand in hand. So once again, to send something, you would just type in dollar. Okay, let's say uh, let's look at my uh, let's do number ten, which is the one that everybody's having trouble with because uh, the new gerbil. Uh, for the X-Carve, you want to have it at 115, so I'm going to change it to 115. Right now, it's 19, okay? So right now, number 10 is at 19, okay? We want to change it to 115, okay? So we're just going to type in dollar sign equal, or dollar sign 10 equals 155, or no, I'm sorry, it's 115, okay? If we hit enter, okay, it says okay, and it's sent. Um, down here it still says 19 okay you got to come over here you got to hit the refresh okay now uh, now we're reading the one in the council which I said is backwards okay I don't know why it does that it's just that's what it does so we got on here to uh, 10 and now you can verify it's reading uh, it's reading 115 uh, I'll keep it at that. I guess I don't know. Uh, I don't like to mess with my setup, so I'm going to turn it back, actually. Okay. So that's how you send it. That's one way to send it. That's the, the common way. That's also the slow way. Uh, let's say you had the reflash, and you ended up uh, needing to re-enter all your stuff. Okay? Everything. It's uh, totally bare bones, gerbil settings which is none of your custom settings. This is why I keep a file with all my my settings. Okay, so if we go over here, I have a file called Phil's Gerbil Send file. This can be sent from UGS. I don't know about Easel. I really doubt you could send it from Easel, but from Universal G Code Sender, you can send it. Uh, if we open it up, um, because the computers go so fast, you have to add uh, blanks in between the lines into, so it doesn't send too fast. Otherwise, it can get ahead of itself with these commands because it's not trying to move the machine. It's just sending uh, inputs really quickly. Um, so you put these these uh, brackets in here, and it slows it down. Okay. So here, if you notice, I have all my code in here, all my sp my settings. Uh, I'm thinking of actually getting rid of a lot of them, uh, but. Uh, just send the ones I, I know I need. Uh, anyways, uh, when we get down to here, if you notice, I'm sending 22 equals 1 before I send 20 equals 1. Okay, this is where I was talking about before, about uh, needing to turn on homing before you turn on uh, soft limits. But anyways, you send this down, and at the end I have uh, turn off spindle and whatever the M2 is. I don't know if that's like end code or whatnot. Uh, on top and bottom, I have it to turn off spindle just to make sure that that spindle does not go on. Okay. And anyways, this is what you do. You send that through uh, like you would uh, any other carve. Okay. In Universal G Code Center, and that'll uh, input all your settings. That's it. So this was a really long video. I'm sorry, but we have to cover it all. Uh, and. Uh, that's it. I'll see you guys.